So let me guess, you want to visit Turkey and you want to swim in the beautiful blue waters of Antalya or Bodrum. You want to take photos of these insanely white thermal pools of Pamukkale and maybe have some delicious kebab or baklava. While all of these things are great, there are certain things for which no one seems to be talking about on the internet and I'm not quite sure why. But if I knew those 10 things that I'm going to share with you right now, it would have saved me so much stomachache, time, money and headaches. Hi Curious Gang, it's your, well, obviously London friend Vasi that loves her city, exploring it and also traveling, giving you useful tips like in today's video. And if you want to see more cool content like this one, which by the way, it is also free, you can hit the subscribe bell button down below. It would really mean the world to me. So the first thing which I wish I knew, or at least I had realized before getting into Turkey, it is how big it is. It is actually the 36th biggest country in the world and it is almost 800,000 kilometers, which means that to get around it will be easier for you to take a plane many of the times because the internal flights are quite cheap. And for example, we took a flight from Antalya to Istanbul and it took us only one hour, but if we had taken a car instead, it would take us like between eight and nine hours and just don't ask about the public transport because it is not really an option in here oh and just a little quick fun fact for you guys only three percent of turkey it is located in europe and the rest 97 percent of it it is in asia which makes it a transcontinental country and Istanbul being the only transcontinental city in the entire world usually when i travel i don't plan out every small little detail because i quite enjoy asking those things to locals uh, small questions for the directions suggestions on restaurants from where can you buy the tickets for the public transport and I was planning to do the same in Turkey until the moment when I went to a bus station and I asked the people at the bus stop from where can I buy the tickets and from those 11 people no one knew a single word in English and it's best if you have Google Translate so it can help you out in those situations and if you found this tip useful don't forget to hit the subscribe bell button down below and another thing which shook me from the very beginning it is how many flags were there around the country which also leads to the fact that Turkish people are extremely proud of their past they're proud of the Ottoman Empire and of their history so I would definitely not suggest you saying anything negative about it it just won't be taken very well always carry cash with you and of course if you go to a big restaurant cafe bar yes you will be able to pay by card however for like all the street food street vendors taxis public transport then you will need cash with you for sure and I also suggest you withdrawing money from the actual banks because the small cash machines they will charge you five percent Fee depending on the amount that you're withdrawing. I hate saying this because I don't like to be negative but you guys I just want you to be more prepared than I was. Don't always trust the reviews on Google Maps because me and Ben went to this restaurant which was rated 4.9 out of 5 and it was one of the best rated places in the area. We went in front of it, it looked pretty empty and not so great, but you know, Google Maps says that it's great, so it must be true. Ben ordered some Turkish kebab, which was kind of like the specialty of this place, and he actually got a food poisoning. And just like that, three days of our holiday were spent in the bathroom. Hi. Hello, Ben. Hello, hello. What's wrong? It hurts a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've been going to the bathroom every 15 minutes, ah. like, like my grandma. Which also brings me to my next tip, it is to bring some basic medicine with you, like something for a stomachache, headache and uh, you know, the most common 
things that you could get. Things are not going to be as perfect and as pretty as they look on Instagram and on all the pictures that you see online. And yes, this is true for pretty much any destination that it's overly popular, but I feel like there was a lot bigger difference between my expectations and reality in Turkey. For example, Pamukkale was a lot more crowded, dirtier and, and not even visiting the exact part of the tourist attraction that I expected to visit. But you know, that definitely doesn't mean that the place is not worth visiting. I'm just saying this so you kind of manage your expectations. You hear very often that Turkey, it is really cheap, which it is kind of true, but I also found out that if you eat at the restaurants or if you stay at the hotels in the touristy areas, then prices will definitely be inflated. And talking about inflation, you know how we complain in the UK that inflation will hit 13%. Well, think that in Turkey it is 10 times worse. Back at our conversation about the prices, we had lunch at this uh, pretty pretty normal spot close to Hagia Sophia and we had one salad, one appetizer and one way main dish and we paid 40 pounds and we just had water and bread. So definitely nothing fancy. But as a comparison, when we had street food, we had like lunch for two pounds each. And if you find a spot full of locals, definitely go for it because it will be a lot cheaper and most probably more de delicious as well. So I'm here happy to confirm that Turkish hospitality, it is a thing, definitely. And I'm saying this from my personal experience because I had a friend of mine from Turkey that I literally haven't seen in years. We haven't even spoken to each other for like two years or something. But the moment when I told her that I was going to Istanbul, she was like my best friend, the kindest host that I have ever had. She invited me and Ben over for multiple dinners. We even stayed at her house and it was literally the best possible real Turkish Turkish hospitality experience. But at the same time, I also have to tell you that other people that would usually try to scam you are the taxi drivers. And I'm saying this because the taxi drivers in Bulgaria are pretty much the same, so I came in prepared in here. The moment when you wave at the taxi, I mean, I guess you cannot really speak in Turkish to them, but you can still greet them in Turkish and right after that, tell them where you're going and ask them how much they're going to charge you for this. So try to negotiate the price beforehand and don't necessarily take the first price that they would give you. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more cool content like this one, don't forget to hit that subscribe bell button down below. Love you all!